Hi, I'm Stephen from Flivver Channel. Today I'm going to take a very close look at a beautiful and intriguing cutaway illustration of a Model T. It's this illustration, actually. If you are new to Model Ts, then this video will be an interesting introduction to the lean design and quirky features of these antique automobiles. But if you're a Model T aficionado, then maybe you'll enjoy spotting my errors and gaffes. I'm fairly new to Model Ts, so I will undoubtedly mess up from time to time. We're looking at a really interesting cutaway illustration that was done by Yoshiro Inamoto. He's a um, automotive artist, quite a prolific one. He did some really interesting illustrations over the years and we're looking at one he did of the Model T. Now this was first published in 1979 in the magazine um, Car Graphic, which is a Japanese car magazine. I took a scan of the original illustration at as high a resolution as I could, but it wasn't really high enough resolution for me to really zoom in and look at some of the details. So I applied some artificial intelligence to um, sharpen the image and to enhance the resolution. So the image, especially when I zoom in, won't be exactly as original. There is a little bit of um, AI interpretation going on there. Now this image has incredible level of detail in it and through the course of this video we're going to take a close look at a number of these areas but you can see just here now how much um, detail there is all the way through the car and how with the uh, cutaway he's able to show the internal components of the vehicle now this illustration is titled 1925 Ford Model T Touring. I think you'll see as we go along that that's just a loose description of the car that he's illustrated. Yoshiro Inamoto did many cutaway illustrations of different cars over the years. Here's four that I found on the internet. Um, you'll probably recognize some of these from different magazines that you may have seen at different times. Um, we've got Formula One cars, antique cars, just look at the detail in this Mercedes. It's really incredible. This guy's just a master of his art form. So the first thing we're going to do is study the coachwork and look at the body that he's drawn on this Model T Touring. What's interesting is that although this is titled a 1925 Model T Touring, the coachwork that he's drawn on it is clearly 1926 or newer. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that. But even at this high level, you can see a few clues right away. There's a fuel filler flap here in the cowl for the cowl gas tank, but there's no cowl gas tank shown. And uh, other features that we'll talk about in a second are also giveaways that this coachwork, the bodywork that's drawn here, is actually 26 or 27. Here's a photograph of a 1926 Model T Touring that I found on the internet. You'll notice how similar this vehicle is and how similar the pose is. I looked for a um, three-quarter angle view very close to the one that he used for the illustration so we could do a direct comparison. And in the direct comparison you can see the similarities. Now before I get into so comparing some specific details, I should point out that the 1926 Model T was the first year of what Ford called the improved car. Now this should not be mistaken with what he called the new Ford. The new Ford was the Model A that came out a few years later. The 1926 Ford Model T was in response to cars from his competition that had more luxury features and more stylish bodies and that sort of thing. So he needed to update the Model T to keep it relevant. Um, so 1926 was arguably the most significant upgrade in Model T's entire run since 1908. 
Among other things, the 1926 included color options other than black. There was an option for wire wheels, for example, and uh, things like the nickel-plated radiator surround and the nickel-plated headlight bezels. That's just a few of the changes, and there were others as well, which some of which we'll touch on as we go through. So, as I said, when you compare this 1926 Model T Touring to the supposedly 1925 Model T Touring that Mr. Inamoto illustrated, you will see actually that the bodywork is a direct match. Um, particular features are uh, dead giveaways. So as we zoom in at this level, you can start to see the curved lower windshield which we see in both the photograph and in the illustration and the shape of the windshield pillar here is the same and one of the most significant similarities is this continuous line uh, crease line from the base of the door of oh, excuse me from the base of the window pillar out to the top of the radiator which you can see starting here and continuing across as well these are all um, distinctively 1926 and not 1925 features. If we zoom in even a little closer still, we'll see the identical fenders. So he's drawn the 1926 fenders as well. In a moment I'll show you 25 fenders and, and how differently how different they are, excuse me. Um, this is the first time we've zoomed in a bit on this illustration. You can start to see some of the level of detail that he's captured and how it matches between the uh, photograph of the car and the illustration. Um, I'm just continuously fascinated and, and impressed with this illustration and the level of detail that it contains. Here is the 1926 photograph and beside it on the right we have a 1925 Model T. Now in 1925 they're only available in black and you'll notice some distinct differences as I've mentioned. The windshield shape and the windshield post shape and of course that crease. In the 1925 there's a big flare and it's not a continuous line through here like it is in 1926. The fenders are also quite different as you see. So this illustration is clearly a 1926 body, but it's titled 1925 Model T Touring. And so we need to look a little deeper to see if indeed maybe the chassis of this car as drawn is a 1925 rather than a 26. So we're gonna spend a bit of time zooming in here and taking a look at some details. So if we look at the rear wheel here, we can see the wood spoked wheels, which were the standard wheel set for both 1925 and 26. Um, these are the demountable wheels, so there's um, nuts and studs that hold the outer part of the wheel onto the um, spoke and fellows part of the wheel. Um, this has the smaller parking brake drums. In 1926, those were enlarged. So that's a clue, the first clue we've uh, discussed so far that the chassis is actually a 1925 or older. Other things you can see here at, at uh, the rear of the car is the transverse leaf spring, which is common in Model Ts and quite distinctive from most other cars of the era. And you can even see the linkage for the parking brake here. Here's the parking brake lever and the linkage coming back to the parking brakes. As we move forward a little bit, here under the front seat, you'll see the fuel tank, which was common 1925 and earlier. So in these cars, if you wanted to fill the fuel tank, you had to open the passenger door, remove the seat cushion for the front seat, and take the fuel filler hose in through the passenger door and fill the fuel tank from within the cabin of the vehicle. In 1926, most of the Model T's moved the fuel tank up to the cowl, so under here. Now there's a number of reasons for that. I'll go into that in a different video sometime. But uh, clearly, um, we're looking at a 1925 or older fuel tank location here. 
Notice you can even see the springs in the seats. It's just gorgeous, this drawing. Um, controls for the um, throttle and the timing on the uh, standard Model T steering wheel. I should point out as well that this exhaust system is not um, normal for a 1926. So I, I'm not that familiar with the exhaust arrangement on a 25. I expect this is uh, the standard 1925 exhaust arrangement. But you can mention in the comments if uh, if I've got that wrong. Now at the front here, we can see that the illustration has sectioned through the front wheel hub, and you can see the uh, front axle and the uh, steering spindle arrangement, the uh, solid front axle, spring perches and again the transverse leaf spring. Um, notice that there are no shock absorbers and no brakes in the front wheels. This is common for the Model T. Um, Model T's did not have wheel brakes. The only braking system the Model T had was a transmission brake. So uh, it's a good thing they only had 20 horsepower and could really only go about 35 miles per hour because their braking system is um, nearly non-existent. The Model T was designed to be very simple and very inexpensive and by eliminating some of these systems uh, Henry Ford was able to bring the sell price of down 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 so um, you know it is was the least expensive car you could buy in those days yet the quality was very high you see the detail in this front wheel section Here's a section from a Ford manual, and you can see how similar it is with the uh, front wheel bearings, um, the wood spokes, the steering spindle. So what we have here in the illustration is clearly a 1925 Model T chassis with a 1926 body drawn over it. So this car would have never actually been built. Um, no doubt someone, um, since these were manufactured, has mixed two sets of parts together and built something like this. But I suspect when Mr. Inamoto did this drawing, he was referring to chassis detail photographs and such from a 1925 and was looking at a photograph of the body for a 1926 and just drew it over top. So next thing we want to do is take a look at the motor. Um, you can see a lot of motor details in his illustration here as he's sectioned through the block. You can see the four pistons from the four cylinder engine. Um, you can see the um, cylinder head and the uh, coolant pipe connection to the radiator tank and the radiator. Some things you'll notice that aren't here. Uh, there's no water pump. There's no fuel pump. This is because the Model T didn't have those. It relied on thermal convection of the uh, coolant to flow the coolant through the engine and the radiator. Uh, it's a process known as thermosiphon. Um, take a look at my other video. I've, I've released a technical video on the thermosiphon system. If you're interested in that, you can uh, watch that video and really get a good technical understanding of how it works. The other thing to notice about this engine is that the spark plug wires here connect to posts in the firewall and behind the firewall is this wooden ignition box where the uh, four coils, one for each cylinder, are housed. So in 1925 and older Model T's, the ignition coils are in the cabin um, against the firewall up under the dash. In 1926, they moved those out to a metal box that's mounted on the engine. I'll show you that in a moment. But this is just another indication that this is clearly a 1925 chassis and engine shown. Here's a 1925 Model T engine bay from roughly the same perspective. And you'll see again the um, spark plug wires coming to these um, ceramic posts that go through the firewall to the ignition box. No water pump. Here's the pipe that takes the cooled coolant from the bottom of the radiator and brings it into the engine. 
where it gets heated up and then flows out into this top radiator tank and cascades down the radiator again forming the thermal siphon loop. This is the horn by the way. Uh, this particular car is shown with an optional starter. I'm bringing up the illustration side by side with that same 1925 engine shot again you can see the spark plug wire so clearly what we're looking at in the illustration is a 1925 engine. Now here's the 1926 motor on the left and the 1925 on the right. So here now you can see the ignition box having been moved into the uh, engine bay, um, connected to the engine head actually. They look quite distinctively different one to another. So another clue that we're looking at a 1925 chassis here is the pedals. Now the Model T has three pedals but they're not what you might expect on any other car. The Model T has a unique gearbox which is operated by the pedals. So it's only a two-speed gearbox. You have low and high gear which are selected with this, the leftmost pedal. If you ever need reverse you press the middle pedal and the pedal on the right is your transmission brake that I mentioned earlier that just slows down the drive shaft. Uh, notice that there's no throttle pedal. Um, throttle, as I mentioned a moment ago, is controlled with this lever on the steering column. It's actually a rod that runs right down the steering column. Um, not really shown here that I can see, but there's a small lever which pushes a rod. That rod goes right through the engine block and operates the carburetor on the other side. But we were talking about these pedals. In 1926 they went to a much wider pedal like you see here on the left and they're farther apart from one another. This was just to make them easier to operate. Again though you'll see clutch, reverse, brake shown on these pedals. So some pedal covers had those letters embossed on them to help people remember what they're for. But anyway, you, um, in the illustration it clearly has these triangle pedals, not these wide ones. So again, it's very clearly a 1925 chassis that we're looking at here. Well that brings us to the end of this video. This illustration by Mr. Inamoto is a beautiful example of a cutaway illustration and I just love this illustration of the Model T with all its details and intricacies and it's even more interesting in the fact that it's a bit of a unicorn, an impossible car, with the 1925 chassis and the 1926 body on it. I hope you enjoyed this video as well. If you like this kind of video, please let me know in the comments and I can do more. I can look at other cutaway drawings, um, I can look at photograph sets and that sort of thing. Thanks for joining me.